Hello and welcome to my channel, I Win to Lose Gaming. Today's video will be going over the ultimate guide for Nuvelette. Why did I keep my intro pretty short? Because as usual with these ultimate guides, it's got a lot of information, so let's just get right into it. Nuvelet is a charge attack laser spamming main DPS character that can be used as an on-field hydro driver or just as the hyper carry that he is so well suited for. We're going to talk about each individual aspect of his kit, starting with his normal attacks. Normal attacks, you can see that these hits here, they scale off of attack percent. He'll do a three hit combo, as well as if you do a charge attack and you release it quickly without any blue balls around him, then the charge attack will just shoot a little beam or whatever that really doesn't do a whole lot of damage. Now, as for his super charge attack, the charge attack equitable judgment, this is when you press and hold the left mouse button and he will basically fire a giant laser at his opponents doing damage based on his max HP. This laser can tick up to eight times against a single target, and if done just like this without any blue balls to absorb, then it will take him an entire seven seconds total to fire out his charge shot. However, if you do have three of the source water droplets, or I'm just gonna be calling them blue balls because source water droplets is quite the mouthful, but if you have three blue balls around him, he will absorb those blue balls and fire his laser much more quickly. Now, the laser attack does not drain stamina, unlike most charge attacks. However, it does drain his max HP. He will lose 8% of his max HP every 0.5 seconds. And every blue ball that he absorbs with his charge attack will heal him for 16% of his max HP. Since you can absorb three of them at once, this means that he can heal for 48% of his max HP per charged attack. Now, how do we get the blue balls for Nuvelet? Why, we can use his elemental skill, which is otherwise quite unremarkable. However, it does generate three blue balls for his charge attack to absorb and quickly fire his laser. And we can see here that it also does a Spirit Breath Thorn. The Spirit Breath Thorn in this case will do Numa aligned Hydro damage, which is good against enemies that have mechanics that are countered by Numa type damage. And finally, we can see that his blue balls last for 15 seconds on field. I don't believe that there is a limit to how many blue balls can be on the field, but perhaps there is, I just never hit it personally. Finally, his elemental skill generates three to four hydro particles. Up next is his elemental burst, which does a bunch of damage based on his max HP, as well as two follow-up waterfall ticks and the cooldown 18 seconds, 70 energy cost. The reason why you want to use this though is to generate six of his blue balls. So as we can see, his kit heavily revolves around generating blue balls and then using those blue balls to make his laser cannon fire pretty much instantly. Up next, we have his first passive, which has this little icon. This actually, this icon will be important and I will show you guys in a little bit. But basically, if you trigger any hydro-related reaction, whether it's vaporized, frozen electric charge, bloom, hydro soil, or hydro crystallize, so literally hydro plus any other element, then he will gain one stack of past draconic glories. And it will increase his charge attack damage by 110, 125%, and 160% accordingly, depending on how many Hydra related reactions you've triggered. Any character in the team can trigger a reaction and it will add a stack. And finally, triggering Vaporize twice will only add one stack. Same with any of the other reactions, you have to trigger three separate reactions, then you will be able to get all three stacks. Why is it important to get all three stacks? This is its own separate multiplier. For those of you that are familiar, it works very similarly to Yoamiya's elemental skill. The next passive is this one, passive two, which adds up to 30% hydro damage depending on Nuvolet's current HP. And this basically caps at when Nuvolet is at 80% of his max HP, he will gain 30% maximum hydro damage bonus. Now keep in mind that because his laser drains his HP by 8%, per 0.5 seconds after about 1.5 seconds or so, the ticks after that will sl do slightly less damage because of this passive going down. Finally, we have his last passive, which increases his underwater sprint speed by 15%. 
So for Nuvolet's talent priority, you definitely want to level up his normal attack as much as possible, followed by his ultimate, and you can get to his skill eventually. This part makes up the least out of his damage output. <laughs> Let's talk about some visual tips and techs for Nuvolet. So the first thing is his first passive. How do we know how many stacks of Draconic Glories that he has? We can see here, that there is this little icon that appeared above his head with a single ring right there. And we can see if we proc freeze, a second ring appears. And finally, if we activate the Electro Charged, three rings appear above the active character. And we swap Nouvellet on, we can see that those three rings have appeared. And one other cool visual indicator is that Nuvolet's hair, as well as clothes, tail thing glow when he has three stacks of the Draconic, whatever it's called. We can see that it switched there to two stacks. He lost his um, glowing hair and tail thing. Now, the next tech that I want to talk about is his charge attack animation cancel. So basically, if you press and hold his left click, he'll charge for about half a second or 30 frames before shooting his laser. But if you press and hold and release, he will immediately fire his laser right after it detects that you've done a charge attack and you release the left click. So if we have it side by side, we can see that you can save roughly 30 frames on his charge attack animation by doing a quick click and hold release versus just clicking and holding the entire time. Just one other small optimization to take into consideration. And finally, we have the last tech, which I covered in much more detail, which is called the spin to win tech, where if you have a mouse with high DPI, you can spin to win and you will generally do about 75% of his damage to all the enemies around him. Keep in mind that, that this specific tech might be considered a bug and it might be fixed in the future. But for now, for those of you PC master races with a mouse with adjustable DPI, you can abuse this and hit everything around you for about 75% of his laser's damage, which is absolutely insane. But as of making this guide, the spin to win tech is still in this game. We're going to talk about his artifacts next. For Nouvellet, um, obviously the four-piece Marichasi Hunter is clearly designed for a character like Nouvellet, and he will gain the three stacks very, very quickly due to the way that his kit works. And at three stacks, this means that you will gain 36% crit rate, which is massive, as well as the two-piece set bonus, which provides 15% charge attack damage. With this in mind, um, he will do about 31% additional damage in comparison to having no set bonus equipped at all, which is a massive boost to his charge attack damage. Now his charge attack is the most important part of his kit that we do want to keep an eye on, but I did include his elemental burst damage calculation here as well. And one more important note about the Marichasi Hunter is you want to keep an eye on your Nuvolet's crit rate because you could very well over crit, which means you have more than 100% crit rate, at which point that becomes completely useless. So 100% crit rate minus 36 is 64% crit rate. You don't want to go above 64% crit rate with Nuvolet, otherwise you will be wasting those stats. So do keep that in mind, and also keep in mind that you'll often have crit abyss cards, so sometimes for some abysses you can get away with a little less crit rate due to the Abyss cards. The next best artifact set though is the four piece Heart of Depth. Fortunately, you will have very good uptime overall with his elemental skill usage on the charge attack. But we can see here that it's, it's still doing substantially less damage than the uh, four piece Marichasi Hunter. After that, you have two piece set combinations. Overall, most of the two piece set combinations will perform similarly to this. It does increase his damage all around, all across the board, 16%, 16% for both his charge attack and Q ratio. And you have more HP, which is nice for survivability, I guess. So yeah, um, not a terrible option if you have some pretty good two piece set combinations. Then we have a couple stopgap artifact sets that are usable in the meantime, which is the four piece retracing bolide. And finally, the four piece wanders troop is an okay one to use as you're farming the four piece Marichasi hunter. Now let's quickly talk about Nuvolet's energy recharge. Overall, for many weapons which provide some energy regeneration, like the Prototype Amber or a signature weapon or the upcoming free-to-play weapon, the Ballad of the Boundless Blue, 
you should probably just have maybe 115 to 125 ish percent energy recharge i find that that tends to be enough energy recharge for him so energy is a big moving target when it comes to nuvolet and let's say you're using a weapon like the uh, something else like the lost prayer to the sacred winds well are you really going to stack like basically 40 to 60 percent energy recharge on him to have 100 percent uptime on his ultimate honestly i don't really recommend it so just get a few energy recharge substats here and there try to get squeeze out what you can when you can and besides that though you're not going to use an energy recharge timepiece on him let's quickly talk about the stats on nuvolet's artifacts it's pretty straightforward just go for an hp percent timepiece hydro damage goblet and crit circlet now in terms of the circlet you can also get away with an hp percent circlet in particular if it has i would say at least two to three superior substat rolls for example if you have like two to three additional crit rolls versus your crit circlet then the hp percent circlet is definitely worth considering using and you'll probably you'll only be a few percentage points lower in terms of his overall damage output and it does depend on his weapon as well for example if you're using a weapon like the prototype amber then an hp percent circlet will be less recommended in comparison to a weapon like for example the kagura's verity where you're going to have a ton of crit stats on this thing so an HP percent circlet is much more acceptable. In terms of substats, it's the usual crit rate and crit damage are the highest priority, followed by HP percent, where I would say even HP percent in many times is just as good, if not better, depending on your HP to crit ratios. And finally, you want to squeeze out some energy recharge substat rolls if possible. And last, but certainly the least, is flat HP, which is still a non-negligible bonus to Nuvolet's kit. Up next, we're going to talk about Nuvolet's weapons, starting with the Tome of the Eternal Flow. So the Tome of the Eternal Flow is clearly his best option and provides him pretty much everything he needs, some HP, some charge attack damage, as well as some energy. So really, it's obviously a weapon catered for him. However, the next best option is going to be the Battle Pass weapon, the Sacrificial Jade. And the Sacrificial Jade though at Refinement 1 isn't all that special doing about 83% of the damage that a Refinement 1 Tome of the Eternal Flow will do. However, if you are in it for the long haul and you keep getting it every battle pass, so roughly 5 patches at 4.5, you can have it at Refinement 5. At Refinement 5, the Sacrificial Jade will be at 93% of the power level of the Tome of the Eternal Flow, but do keep in mind that the Sacrificial Jade does not help with energy recharge or energy restoration, so there is that bit of cost. It's also worth mentioning that the Sacrificial Jade does have a condition where you cannot keep Nouvellet on field for more than 10 seconds, but generally speaking, you should be able to easily swap them on and off because you're going to want to apply things like Viridescent Veneer Shred or even Archaic Petra Crystals. So it's not all that difficult to maintain this weapon's passive. Now, the next best weapon for him, in my opinion overall, is the Prototype Amber. Yeah, you heard that right. It's completely free to play friendly and it provides a really hefty amount of energy, 18 energy total, as well as 18% healing for the entire party. So with this weapon, you can absolutely get away with not having another healer on the team and having Nuvolet actually heal himself since he'll be on the team taking most of the damage and heal the entire party with the prototype Amber. Not only that, it mitigates the energy issues that he might have, but we can see that he's only doing 70% of the damage in comparison to a Refinement 1 Tome of the Eternal Flow. So <laughs> free-to-play players, unfortunately, don't really have a great option for maximizing Nuvolet's damage, but we do have a good compromise in terms of utility as well as damage with the prototype Amber. Now after that, we have the upcoming weapon, the Ballad of the Boundless Blue. This weapon is actually very similar to the prototype Amber in terms of performance. Overall, I still actually recommend the prototype Amber more because that one will heal your entire party as well as providing similar amounts of energy support. Now, up next, we have the Lost Prayer to the Sacred Winds. Obviously, if you stay on field for a very long time, this weapon will do a bit better, but you generally want to swap Nuvolet after one or two lasers in order to reapply Viridescent Veneer Swirls and perhaps get some other buffs like the Archaic Petra if you can. So because of that, the Lost Prayer it ha always has the same issues, but it's still a decent stat stick. And generally speaking, you can often have one stack and sometimes two stacks pragmatically with this weapon. 
After that, we have the Kagura's Verity. Uh, it's just an okay stat stick. After a very, very long time, you can have three stacks on this during a battle, but you know, it does take a while to ramp up to three stacks, and the buff it provides at three stacks is pretty small, all things considered. Finally, we have the Everlasting Moon Glow. It's just a stat stick with a bunch of HP percent. Finally, we have the R5 Widsith. If you want to gamble and feel like a god with only one ninth uptime, well, the Widsith is pretty good for you. But because the cooldown is 30 seconds, because you have a one in three chance to get the two note buff, this weapon is not recommended overall for New Villette. And here's the rest of the weapons that I bothered doing some math for, but overall, once we kind of get down to this part of the list, they're not really weapons that I strongly recommend. <laughs> Next, let's talk about teams for Nuvalet. So Nuvalet's passive one is incredibly important for his damage output, which means that you really want to activate all three stacks. This team here is probably gonna be his cookie cutter team in terms of a hyper carry Nuvalet build, where it's gonna be Zhongli and Kazuha plus a flexible fourth party member. It could be a healer, for example. It could be an electro character. No matter what though, it's gonna be a non Hydro, non-animo, non-geo character. Now, there is one issue with Nuvalet when running him with a Dendro character like Nahida, and the issue is that it's difficult to swirl Hydro after the very first Hydro swirl because Dendro is oftentimes going to be on the enemy, so therefore you're going to lose a lot of damage on Nuvalet after the first you know, few seconds where Virtus and Veneer is easily active. However, this can easily be made up for, obviously, with Hyper Bloom itself, you can run either Kuki or Raiden Shogun in this situation, and you will have a really good Nuvalet Hyper Bloom team. You can even replace Kazuha with someone else, like for example, Zhong Li, to have consistent resistance shred on both the Hydro as well as the Dendro side. Now, the next team that is actually pretty reasonable, especially in AoE situations, is going to be a Burgeon team, and these three characters are going to be the key building blocks for a Burgeon team. We have Nuvalet, Nahida, and Dea, plus a fourth character as usual, probably something like Kazuho, an Animo character, in order to swirl Hydro to do as much damage for Nuvalet as possible. And finally, when it comes to Nuvalet, he is surprisingly flexible. Let's say you want a healer, you can bring Chi Chi. Let's say you just, you need a Viridescent Veneer Swirler. Well, Sucrose is a pretty good option. And finally, because we have Cryo and Animo here, we just need any other element and let's just slap in Fischl. You can pretty much mix and match any other three elements with him, although I do highly recommend an Animo character for a Viridescent Veneer Swirl, and you will have a pretty functional team with New Valette. Now, the team that I showcased in my Constellation Zero Showcase video, which I actually do still recommend, is a team like this. Goro can use Archaic Petra and he's uniquely positioned to be a slightly better Archaic Petra user than most. 35% bonus Hydro damage is better than most of the other buffs that the other characters can provide. So that is why, you know, Goro's actually not too copium when it comes to boosting Nuvalet's damage. Finally, we have Constellation 6 Sucrose. This is, I guess, like a completely free to play variant. And we have a fourth flexible slot. Diona's okay here. And Lisa's actually not bad as well for maximum damage um, amplification. You can even run Fischl as we see from earlier. Heck, you can even run Dory to help with energy management. I mean, really, again, the, it's you're super flexible in this in these slots. And Layla, finally, if you have her constellation, I believe four, she adds a little bit of flat damage every time her stars fire off. Now, I do also want to quickly talk about Constellation 1 teams. Constellation 1 allows Nuvalet to run a Hydro character because Nuvalet simply swapping onto the field will give him one stack of past Draconic Glories. Because of this one stack, you only need two other elements on the team. And for a hyper carry Nuvalet, well, now he's able to run a character like Mona, who can provide a ton of bonus damage and support for Nuvalet. Constellation 1 really allows a lot more team building flexibility because you're able to slot in that Hydro character. So next, let's talk about his constellations really quick. His constellation one, I briefly touched upon in the team building section, but this thing is a godsend for him. It pretty much makes him able to use a Hydro teammate which, you know, depending on future characters as well as even current characters like Mona, adding a Hydro character and 
helping out his rotations a bunch because now you only need to use two hydro reactions instead of three, which can be very clunky to use three at a time. This Constellation One, in my opinion, provides so much value as well as utility. And on top of that, it increases his interruption to resistance or interruption resistance while he's doing his laser beam. I don't know how much super armor it does give him. So if someone does know how much super armor it gives him, do let us know down in the comments below. Now his Constellation 2 pretty much just adds 42% crit damage to him, which is just a nice little bump to his damage. And finally, his Constellation 3 actually adds three levels to his normal attack. And finally, we have Constellation 4. This is okay, but really it's not that big of a deal. However, it can be especially useful for his Constellation 6, which we'll talk about in a sec. Constellation 5 adds three levels to his ultimate. It's not really that important. And finally, Constellation 6 is a big one where he can shoot his laser for a very long time. On top of that, it does a little bit additional damage with the two additional waterfalls that hit every other second or so. It is just a crazy constellation. You can pretty much just shoot his laser for a very, very long time. And with the spin to win tech, this will be very, very overpowered. So by C6 R5, Nuvolet should be doing. Now do keep in mind that my calculations here don't factor in the extra damage from the waterfalls. So it's not entirely accurate in terms of how much additional damage he'll do per charge attack, but he should do over about twice the amount of damage as he does at C0 R1. His constellations are extremely good and he will be absolutely cracked at C6 R5. So a quick question I think some people will ask is, should I go for his constellation one or should I go for his signature weapon? Now, honestly, if it were me, regardless of what weapon I have, I would choose his Constellation 1 purely for team building flexibility. In particular, in the future, if we do get even better Hydra supports for him, which we already have some pretty decent ones, then this Constellation 1 will become even more valuable, as well as the quality of life from the um, super armor that he gets from it. <laughs> So yeah, that about covers it for Nuvolet. He is an incredible character. If you want more of my opinions on him, I've already made a couple videos on him uh, covering his Constellation Zero power level and showcase, as well as his <laughs> uh, ridiculous spin to win tech. Let me know if I missed anything in this video down in the comments below. As always, I appreciate every single one of you. This is I Went to Lose, signing out.